Hey there! This is Wake Angel 2001! Time for another Sonic Boom Vlog! This was a uh, unnamed episode. And well... Yep, it's official. I hate all these people that live in the village. Yep. They are horrible. They... This... Yep, yep, I hate them all. Yep, screw them! Screw them! <laughs> they suck. All right. Uh, wow. <laughs> All right, so the episode begins with a town meeting, um, with the season one callback to how the, the major drive for tourism in the town was the world's largest ball of twine, which Sonic unraveled in the first season to save the, to save the village from a landslide. He was about to do a reminiscent flashback, but they said they didn't have time for that. So um, they needed to find a way to improve tourism, so, uh, suggestions started getting thrown around, uh, one including, like, um, like marketing, like making t-shirts with the town name on it. Only thing is, no one actually knew what the name of the village was. <laughs> um, I, I believe they've actually said on several occasions that the village, that they live in an unnamed village. <laughs> so, so, um, Amy says that they can do, they can go to the library and research, um, and research what the what the village's original name was. When Tails says that he could just look it up online, so Amy starts extolling how great the library is with all of its references and endless films of microfiche and all that. And Tails has found it, uh, and it turns out that the name of the village is Badgerville. This being that it was named after a badger who who owned the the town's land. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so this guy was an asshole. <laughs> uh, he was one of those ruthless bank owners that gained the system so that he could get a uh, personal personal wealth at the expense of, of everyone else. Like he would ex he would expend he would um he would uh, like he would foreclose on people's homes so he could develop the land for his own profit and all this stuff. And the fact is that he got so that that he was so ruthless and unlike that eventually they drove him out of the town. They destroyed all the signage that bore his name, which of course included the signs, the, the name of the town itself. But because the villagers, even a hundred years ago, the villagers were a bunch of assholes, they were all too lazy to actually rename the town. So technically speaking, the town is still called Badgerville. But the thing is, nobody wanted the town to be called Badgerville because, you know, they don't want their town to be named after a jerk like that. Oh, and it turned and Styx realizes that this that the badger was her great great grandfather. So she freaks out because it means that her ancestor was the man. <laughs> he stood against everything she everything she she he stands for everything that she hates. Oppression and uh greed, uh um uh bad poor quality signage, <laughs> all that. Um, so Amy helps Styx. Amy says that, um, that, you know, like, like, this is, like, like, he, he lived so long ago and nobody even really remembered, um, uh, so, so that, like, she's a hero, the people of the town like her, she'll be fine. And of course, when they go through town the next day, we see Styx, like, like, Styx is walking through and it seems like everybody is staring at her or avoiding her. And Amy's like, don't you feel like that every day? He's like, yeah, but this time it's not my paranoia. And at first, I was going to think that this is all in Styx's head, but no, no. This is, what, this is the reason I hate the people of this town now, because they actually do judge Styx for being the descendant of, of, uh, of someone who is manic. I mean, really, like... I'm not going to go off on this. Um, so... Yeah, yeah, this is kind of like, this is kind of like holding the living descendants of Hitler, uh, like, to, to, to the thing, like, like, uh, like demanding, like demanding reparations from the descendants of former slave owners, or, like, yeah, but this is like, like, dude, like, the guy lived so long ago that nobody even remembered him, so why would you expect this person who didn't even know them personally to make reparations, especially with the fact that the person... Absolute, um, absolutely stands against all the things. Like, 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 I cannot stand this concept 
of inherited sin from your ancestors. That's that's bull crap. All right. So um, yeah. So the people of this village are are horrible, and I hate them all. Uh, so they decide to have a vote to rename the town. Um, Stick says she's gonna lie low since everybody hates her, and um, and uh, Amy has to make sure that they don't name it something stupid. So of course, at the town meeting, they start throwing stupid names around. Uh, Sonic wants to name it after himself because of his massive ego. Knuckles wants to name the village Knuckles because for some reason he feels that that's a strong name. And, um, and Amy suggests uh, Pleasant Valley, which everybody seems to like because uh, it, it, it would increase tourism. Uh, it's not legally liable, so if it's misleading, they can't, they can't hold it against them. So they're all set to name it Pleasant, Pleasant Valley. The thing is, okay, this is because I'm already a huge nerd for this show. I remember a season one episode where where Amy was gonna go across the the forest to to collect the to collect some berries for a pie or something like that. And she says she was gonna go through the treacherous pass and and the valley the valley of knives and all this crap and pleasant gardens and then um and then that's and then she come back. And Dix was like, you'll never make it through Pleasant Gardens! <laughs> because apparently the most horrible place in that list of dangerous sounding names was Pleasant Gardens. So if you name your place Pleasant Valley, people are going to associate that name with the horrifying Pleasant Gardens. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, apparently um, the fact that, you know, the name just sounds nice, so people would come, and, you know. So Eggman, he says that uh, that he wants to name the, the place Eggman City instead. And, uh, and Amy says that they've already decided in Pleasant Gardens, but Eggman says it doesn't work that way. There has to be an ordinance and paper. There's, there's a procedure. This thing has to be put to an official vote. So uh, they go on with an ad campaign. Um, uh, Eggman, using his natural charisma and vast resources, is able to make a bunch of, of convincing ad campaigns and... Um, and uh, free and free and he gives away free swag and every and is well liked by everybody, while while um while Amy and Amy tries uh tries uh, advertise for for her name, um but you know she's much more grassroots. Plus, since she's associated with sticks, um they everybody who still hates sticks doesn't want any so doesn't want to go by her her uh you know her thing. And um. This is where I feel like they're trying to make a commentary on the last election. Like, you got this big charismatic guy who's clearly the wrong choice. But then you have the alternative choice that's also associated with negative things. And even if they might have been better, like... Like, I didn't vote for Trump, but no, Sonic Boom, you're not going to convince me that Hillary would have been a better choice for the election. We must get rid of both the Democrats and the Republicans if our nation is going to recover. Uh, and this suddenly got political, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the most downloaded video of, uh, in my entire channel's history. <laughs> oh, if any of you are still watching, let's continue with the episode recap. Um, so Eggman wins the election. It's a landslide. Like, 98% of the people voted for him. And he says that, um, that his ordinance wasn't only to change the name of the city, but it was, uh... Also, for the fine, the fine prince said that he it gave him absolute control. So not only is he is is a city called Eggman City, but he's also the dictator of it. And the first thing he does is shut down the media. Okay, now I'm absolutely certain that this is about the last election cycle. Um. All right, so uh, I can't even. I can't even. Um. Yeah, the fastest way to make you hate everybody is to make an episode about politics. Because nobody comes off looking good in politics. So, Eggman, uh, he decides that he's going to tear down most of the buildings in the city and use it to build his amusement park. Because, you know, even in the Genesis games, Eggman has always had kind of an amusement park fetish. That's his thing. <laughs> um, uh, so he says that the, that, that the people will be employed in the amusement park and it'll increase tourism. So, economically speaking, he's actually working pretty sound. Like, like, okay, 
Why is it that the bad guy of this series is not only the one who works within the letter of the law, but also is the one who is financially sound? Then again, I guess Lex Luthor was a billionaire, so I guess I guess villains being good with money is just a thing. <laughs> um, also, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh... Also, the, he said that the, the people voted without actually reading the fine print, so I'm pretty sure they were throwing in a reference to the Patriot Act. You know, that law that Congress signed in during the Bush administration that took away a whole bunch of our rights and freedoms because it had a really cool-sounding title. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, Amy... Uh, knowing that they can't take Eggman down legally, Amy goes to the library to do research to see if she can find some loophole to oust Eggman without becoming a hypocrite. Because, you know, that's so important. And, you know, I guess it is kind of important in this context. Um, so she she goes and she does. A, there's a whole research montage. Um, and and uh, they say that... And she realizes that after, after Mr. Beaver was kicked out of the village, he never actually relinquished his ownership of the land. Meaning that ownership of the land passes on to his, his next of kin. And his only living descendant is Styx. So technically speaking, the village belongs to, and has always belonged to, Styx the Badger. So they return... So, so um, we get another Stixism. It's a really long rant about all the things that she owns, including a reference to pod people, but and invisible towers where the aliens are. But let's not uh, get, let like I can't actually quote the Stixism. It's too big, but it's it's awesome. It's an awesome Stixism. Um, and they they uh they 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 go back to Eggman. Um, they say that that the election was completely meaningless. Uh, ha ha, uh, and that it actually all belongs to Sticks. At first, everyone's upset that Sticks owns everything, but Sticks says that that as it is hers to do so, she relinquishes control of the village to the people. So hooray! Of course, Eggman has now gone back to his full-on villain mode. Like, fuck, I'm still gonna destroy this youth center. So he tries to run over with his bulldozer and all of his orb bots, so ball bots, which I guess could be called wrecking ball bots in this context. Um, but now that Eggman is just an invading uh, attacker again, uh, Sonic, Amy, and ev all, everyone's able to just fight everybody off. And Styx's weapon of choice in this episode is her trusty quarterstaff. <laughs> I think I've seen her with that quarterstaff more than I've seen her with her boomerang. Uh, so they manage to fend off Eggman, and everybody's safe and sound. Um, so, so the... So they, they, want, they decide that it would actually be okay to keep the name Badger Village because uh, now, instead of being known for, the, for the, the asshole banker who kicked people out of their homes, uh, now it's known for the hero Styx. But Styx says she doesn't really want the village to be named after her, and instead it should be named after, after, a, after a real hero that, that's given a lot. Uh, she wants to call it Hedgehog, Hedgehog Village. And so at first, Sonic, because of his aforementioned massive ego, thinks it's named after him, but no, it's named after Amy Rose Hedgehog. <clears throat> Amy Rose Hedgehog? You know, you could have called it Rose Village. That sounds very pretty. Rose Village. Amy Rose... Rose is her surname. She's not Amy Rose Hedgehog. She wants to be Amy Rose Hedgehog, but she's Amy Rose. Unless, of course, this is the fact that maybe everybody's surname is their animal type. I don't know. Like, I like... I, nah, whatever. <clears throat> they kind of screwed up naming it Hedgehog Village because apparently Amy's full name is Amy Rose Hedgehog, and I will fight anyone for hours on how that is not the case. I mean, this is... This is, do female dwarves have beards levels of nerdery here? <laughs> and Rose Village would have been so much better than, than Hedgehog Village, because that makes it sound like a village that's populated by hedgehogs. Not that Badgerville was much better, but whatever. Alright, so, um, Knuckles still says they should have named the town Knuckles, because he likes that name for some reason he doesn't know. And that's the episode. Okay, political commentary, political commentary, political commentary, politics are awful. Um, politics are awful, the people of this village are awful, and everyone is awful. 
However, despite the fact that all those things are awful, the episode itself is still pretty good. The humor's fine, the commentary actually works, um, and, you know, this is an episode that heavily focused on sticks, and anything that brings attention to sticks is always a good, is always good, because sticks is awesome. So, this is a whole bunch of horrible stuff, which still works out to be good. Like, wow, I am very impressed that Sonic Boom can take horrible things and make it good. Kind of, it's kind of like the anti-Teen Titans Go, which can take great things and make them horrible. Alright. Um, this episode has actually managed to angry up my blood quite a bit, so I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go off right here before I forget that I'm trying to keep my language PG-13 at worst. Alright, we'll see you in next week's episode.